What's up, everyone? How you like that? Ooh, energetic. Get in your face. Watch out. Coming at you. I'm going to pop out of that computer screen and beat you up. So, I don't know. Uh, if you're watching on a phone, though, you're fine. I can't, I can't fit through that. So, anyway, I can't fit through a computer monitor either. <laughs> Unless you got one of those big ones. If you do, I'm coming. Right, watch out. I'll be in that ass. So, anyway, I am here to show you my Nintendo Switch collection. This is a number uh, update number two, I guess. The reason why I'm doing it today is because this is the two-year anniversary of this little boy. This little cutie right here. Look at him. Ain't he cute? Oh, he's beautiful. Uh, almost the exact same one I had two years ago. The only difference is this Joy-Con right here. Uh, I had uh, drift issues, so I had to get it fixed. And when I mean fixed, I mean I had to buy a new one. So, or a used one actually, and the drift is uh, is fine now, so that's, that's good. Um, so that's the only real negative I have over the last two years of this Nintendo Switch. It's been great so far, a lot of ports, a lot of great new games. Of course, shit, day one we had a new Zelda, so <laughs> right there, it's already good in my book. Even though uh, when uh, Twilight Princess came out, I didn't buy a Wii. I bought, I, I just bought it on GameCube. I had to wait a month though. That sucked. I remember that. <laughs> the, for some reason, the GameCube version of Twilight Princess came out a month after the Wii version. Just, just to say fuck us, I guess, right? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> rant over. Love me some Nintendo. So let's get to it. I actually, I think when I did a collection before, I think I had around like maybe 20 games. Now I have about 33, but I also have a bunch of loose cop like cases. Pretty much, these are ones that were I pretty much traded to GameStop that I wanted to keep the case for. Um, not all of these are GameStop. Let me see. Uh, no, I think all of them are GameStop. <laughs> I'm looking at them like, yeah, no, I traded that in, traded that in, traded that in, traded. Yeah, I traded. I traded a lot into GameStop. Um, it's to buy other games, to be fair. But um, I still have like 33 games, so I think 33. I think I counted right. Maybe 34. I don't know. I will figure it out. Maybe not really. But uh, besides this. I own a lot of digital games, so in the future, I, I've said this before, but in the future, I will be doing a digital uh, collection for my Nintendo Switch. So anyway, let's get to it, baby. Let's start off with, of course, one of two Tetris games on the Nintendo Switch. That, of course, is Puyo Puyo Tetris, uh, frantic four-player puzzle mashup. Of course, it has Puyo Puyo in there, um, which uh, that's a that's a shame. I just want Tetris, uh, <laughs> personally. I mean, Puyo Puyo is fine. I, it's fun, I guess. But every time I play this, I play the Tetris version. That's all I need. I just need Tetris, and uh, this is a lot of fun. This is the GameStop exclusive one that comes with a keychain. I think the keychain's still in there. Something's rattling around, so I'm assuming it is. Um, yeah, it's in there. Papers in there too. I don't know. Okay, here it is. So it's a nice little keychain. I never, I never really thought of using it, mainly because half of it is a, a game I don't really care for, and the other half is a game I like. So I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'll keep it in there. Keep it, keep it protected. I guess they put this paper in there to make it so it doesn't bounce around too much, but uh, it doesn't really work because uh, it bounces around. So uh, in there, box is in nice condition for the most part. I kept it in decent condition. I think. I think I did a good job. You know what? I'm, I'm pretty good. I like myself. I don't know about you. But, uh, alright. Anyway, next is a big mistake. Nintendo Labo <laughs> Toy Con number one. This is, uh, yeah, it's in my, uh, by the way, a lot of these cartridges are inside my, uh, carrying case. I don't know why I have the Toy Con one in my carrying case, but, uh, here, just to prove it, here's a bunch of carts. Um, I think the Toy Con one's in there. If it's not, then it's in another case. I got too lazy to take out the Toy Con case, and I put it in a different case. I don't know. Believe me, I didn't get rid of it. Because if I get rid of this, the cardboard is literally pointless. <laughs> like, it does nothing. I can't do anything with it. Uh, and to be honest, I'm not doing anything with it anyway, so... should just get rid of it. Because, uh, I mean, I did build two things, but I didn't really do anything with them. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> the toy con. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. Nintendo Labo is, is, is cool. It's just not... It's not amazing. But anyway, next is a game that is also not amazing. Fire Emblem Warriors. Which is, a, of course, our first Fire Emblem game. Is it a common thing? I guess it is a common thing at this point for Nintendo Switch to have their first game in a classic series to be like some spin-off thing. You know, like you had Pokemon, Let's Go, that was just what, whatever. Um, Fire Emblem Warriors. Um, I can't think of anything. Oh, Travis Strikes Back, of course. Uh, the No More Heroes game. Let me see. Anything else? And I'm looking at the... Okay, that's three I named immediately. So, and those are all... 
Wii, like games that were popular on the Wii. So, to be fair, I actually Fire Emblem wasn't really popular. We had one Wii game, so whatever. Popular Nintendo series, whatever. I don't care. What was the other game? I said <laughs> I already forgot. I don't know. I'm a, I'm like half. I'm half in the zone, half out the zone. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. But anyway, all right. So uh, next is Bayonetta Dos. Which, of course... Oh, by the way, I never played Fire Emblem Warriors. I just heard it wasn't very good. But I bought it. It was cheap, so why, why not? Why not? Uh, Bayonetta 2, which does come with the... Uh, or it did come with the uh, Bayonetta 1 code. I uh, bought it off Gamefly, which was cool to buy stuff off Gamefly because it will they will ensure you that everything that it originally came with, all the codes and stuff, will be in the box when you buy it, which is really cool. So that's why I got the Bayonetta 1 code. I got that for like 25 bucks too. And that was like a year ago at this point. Uh, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Of course, great game. Great game. So good. Really enjoy it. Um, by the way, Bayonetta 2 is a fantastic game too. I have yet to play it again on the Nintendo Switch. And I'm not going to lie, never beat it on the Wii U. So, uh, I guess I can't really say it's a great game because <laughs> I haven't finished it. I got really close. I just A lot of games, especially on the Wii U, I just like <laughs> I gave up on after a little while. Even though I, I was loving them, I was just like, I don't know, I just don't like the controller. I didn't have the Pro Controller anymore. I got rid of that. It's just, I don't know, I didn't want to play it on the Wii, the big ass the big ass laptop size, like it's like if you control the game on the TV with this, you like actually this, like you're you're playing on, except it's bulkier and, and more toy like, you know, because that, that's the one thing I always thought about the Wii U gamepad. It was it was very much a toy. It was made of made, made of I think ninety five maybe ninety nine percent plastic, um, and it just felt light and cheap, and the thumbsticks were like way too big, and I don't know, I don't want to shill over the Wii U, but was well, great. But anyway. Uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. This is the first Mario game to come out on the Switch, right? So, correct. It's a spinoff. So, four games in popular series from Nintendo that were spinoffs. The only one, Zelda. It's You're lucky that Zelda game came out before or right when the Switch came out. Because if not, then Hyrule Warriors would have been on there before a, a real Zelda game. So, congrats to you. Oh, here's another one. Dragon Quest Builders. Not a popular Nintendo franchise, but it's a spinoff to a series that is getting, of course, a game in the main series on the Nintendo Switch. And that, of course, is a Dragon Quest Builders 2. No, I'm just kidding. Dragon Quest uh, 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 <laughs> uh, 11. There you go. I wanted to say 8. My brain kept saying, just say 8. Just say 8. I was like, that's not right. That's the only one I played. That's why I wanted to say that. But uh, Dragon Quest Builders actually uh, did play this on PS4. It's really fun. Really fun game. Uh, I have yet to open this, though. I got it, I think it was on sale or something like that. I have yet to open it, and uh, I don't know if I will. I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Uh, this game I bought because I thought it would be worth something, because it had like a limited run kind of thing at GameStop, but uh, that's not the case. It's just not a you know popular game at all, and that is Has Been Heroes. It was only a $20 game. It was a exclusive no, that's not true. It wasn't exclusive to Switch. Um, it was... What was it? It was exclusive something. I thought it was exclusive. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> there's that. It has been heroes. Good good, good job. I'm a little off today. I, I apologize. I'm a little tired. Uh, I had a long day. A lot of stress. So I apologize if uh, this video is not great. But anyway, next is uh, the Adventurer's Edition of Yeez? 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 Eight? Ease 8. Ease 8. Lacrimosa of Donna, which I played about like 7-8 hours of. I need to go back to it. Right now I'm playing Final Fantasy 9 though, so after I'm done with that maybe. But then I also have Tales of Vesperia to play, so I don't know. I, I want to go back to it because I really enjoyed what I played so far. I, I just There's a couple problems on the Switch version. Whenever you're in portable mode, there's just I don't know, a lot of frame rate issues. Uh, I played it a couple times on, on the TV, but... I don't know. It just, it just, it still had problems on TV. It just a little bit less noticeable because you know it's a, t it's TV, so it's kind of further away. I, I know that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense, but I, there's definitely more problems on the handheld version. Uh, but great game so far, and I, it came with a bunch of crap. Uh, it came with a, a map and a collector's card thing. So there you go. The game again. The game is uh, inside my carrying case. Uh, next is Owl Boy, which is a game I really want to play actually uh, but it is a Metroidvania and right now there's about 25 Metroidvania games I have to play so this one 
will be played. It's definitely on the top of the list, or at least number two. I think Hollow Knight right now is actually number one. But uh, this one it will definitely be played, because I heard it's a great game. It has a great story, too. Great visuals. It took uh, the developer years to make this game, so I really want to try it out. It kind of reminds me of Dust and Elysian Tale in that respect, because it took a long time for that game to be made, and it had a similar-esque art style. You know, it was very cartoony and colorful and nice. Um, and also, it was a... Uh, it's also a Metrovania, so... By the way, I should be getting that game soon, too. I ordered a limited-run games version of that, um, and it's still not here. It should be here soon, though. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe maybe Tuesday. Maybe never! Maybe I'll never get it! Fuck! Uh, next is Le Noir, of course. Le Noir. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, LA Noir, of course. I played this back when it was on 360. I, it says $30, but it, uh, GameStop had it for... I think it was... 15 maybe 20 uh, I should have waited though because I remember seeing it for 10 during Black Friday I was like Ew. when I bought it, it was like one of their pro day sales or some shit so uh yeah kind of messed up there uh yeah this one's actually in there because I knew I was gonna probably play that one anytime soon but it does have background art which I really like so there you go well it has like half background art art it has a uh, background art and then it has warranty and whatever so there you go Next one is Sodom. That's messed up. Sodom. Oh, Soldam. Soldam. Oh, sorry. Oops. Drop, connect, erase. Uh, I'm about to say Sodom with a couple of cute little anime characters like that. It's a little messed up. I don't want, I don't want Sodom. Um, drop, connect, erase. It says that on the back, too. I don't really know what this is. I bought it for $8 on eBay. It's a really cheap Switch game. Uh, and that was a few months ago. So someone was just selling it $8 free shipping. I got it. It's a puzzle game. I haven't played it yet. Probably will never. I just wanted to add it to the collection. Uh, Octopath Traveler, another RPG I need to play. There's, hey, just I just want to say this, just straight up. There's way too many freaking RPGs. You need to slow it down. Like, really. There's too many. And you know what? Everything now, e including just your straight up action games and adventure games and fucking card games and, I don't know, whatever, toilet bowl simulators. Everything's got to be a freaking 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hour epic. Like, just slow it down. Make a nice... Little 10 hour game, maybe even less. You know, that's why I really enjoy Resident Evil 2. It's just like you can finish that game in like six hours. You know, less if you rush through it, I guess. Um, so, <laughs> Octopath Travel. I mean, don't get me wrong, this one makes sense that it's long, obviously. But uh, there's so many games out there that do not need to be the length they are. Like, I heard Devil May Cry 5 is like 15 to 20 hours. I'm like, oh god, Metro Last Light. I mean, not Last Light, I'm sorry. Metro Exodus is supposedly like 30 hours. I'm like, the last game was like 8 hours. What the fuck? <laughs> like, just don't. I just want a nice, concise little thing. Get me through point A, point B. Give me some, some like, mission structure or design or level design where I can do what I want so I could do it freely. It's not just linear. I go point A, point B, shooting everything. Uh, and then I'm good. Like, Dishonored. Dishonored's perfect. 8-hour game. Go through it however you want. It's highly replayable. If you want to replay it, that's it. Anyway, rant over. Um, next is <laughs> limited run games. It's like the only one I bought that I re I've received at least. I, I bought two other Switch games, I believe. Um, they're still not here yet. They take a long ass time. Let me, let me just say another rant. I'm going on another rant. Limited run games takes a long time. All right, rant over. So anyway, <laughs> Saturday morning RPG. They do. I, I understand manufacturing stuff, especially the collector's editions. I get it, but uh. Yeah, it's taking a long time. So anyway, Saturday morning RPG. There you go. Boom, boom. Boom. I got the PS4 and the Vita version, so had to get the Switch version. And I also have the soundtrack and the vinyl. Um, by the way, that's an RPG, but guess what? Short. <laughs> Just want to say that. <laughs> it's an RPG, but it's short. <laughs> anyway, next is another Metrovania, Dead Cells. One of my favorite games of last year. Played this for a few hours, for the most part. I, I, I never finished it, not gonna lie. But uh, from what I played, it was really great. And I and that will be a game that will stay in my collector's... I mean, not collector, my carrying case for a very long time. Came with an art book. I got it from uh, GameStop. I think you can get this on Amazon now. But uh, I think when it first came out, it was only on GameStop.com. Or... I think I ordered it on GameStop. No, actually, no, I got it in the store. Never mind. Uh, this one is actually a European game. I actually wanted to get this to play it because I played this when I was younger uh, when I was playing a lot of shit on the PC because my library I had a pretty good computer not great but good enough where when I was like I don't know it was like 2008 I could play most games before like 2004 
Like, I could play Far Cry, you know. I had a good enough computer. Not great, obviously, but good enough. So I played a bunch of PC games that my library had. Uh, and this was one of them, and that was Siberia. And I wanted to play it again. I played the second one, too. Heard the third game is horrible, which is really disappointing, because I really like the series. But um, there you go. Siberia. Bam, bam, bam. And it is, like I said, the PAL version right there. Um, so there you go. This one I got because it was like, I think this one was also eight bucks. Uh, not as bad as Sodom, uh, which I'm going to call it for now on. Uh, but uh, not a game that I'm particularly interested in. And that is NBA 2K18, of course. Yeah. I figured for some reason, I, f I figured NBA games... They drop in price pretty quickly uh, after they come out, of course, because the next one comes out a year later and stuff, so they drop it quick, so people would buy it more before the next one comes out, and when the next one comes out, no one will be buying the last year's edition, whatever. Uh, but I thought for some reason maybe the Switch versions would keep value, but no, that's not the case. Uh, next, Brawl Out. Alright, so... <laughs> <laughs> Remember Smash Brothers? Me neither. I'm playing Brawl Out, baby. Look at this guy. I'm playing as Frog Man, Frog with four arms. Oh, that's the Lucha. What's the what's the what's the Lucha game? Guacamole. I think that's the Guacamole guy, right? Let me see. Hold on. Everybody, give me a minute. Original in indie guest characters. Yeah, that's the Guacamole guy. I have a feeling I knew that already. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, Brawl Out. <laughs> Why am I looking at it? Uh, Lego City Undercover. I actually got this because it was really cheap on eBay. I got a lot, I got a lot of games on eBay for cheap. Uh, it was like 15 bucks, I think. I got a few months ago. And it came with this little outer box, which has like a Lego set inside. I'm not going to show you the Lego set because it's just in a bag. So you don't really see anything. Um, but uh, well, I don't know if that's worth anything, really. But uh, the outer box was cool enough where I was like, yeah, I'll try. I mean, it's kind of damaged, but for the most part, yeah, I'll, I'll get it. I didn't really care for it on the Wii U. Uh, I had a long-ass loading time. I don't know if it's better on the Switch but uh, or on the Xbox or PS4. It's also on those. Um, but, yeah, I'm glad to see that one of their only original licenses, the LEGO game licenses, is actually you know, on more platforms than just the fucking Wii U. <laughs> because the Wii U is a, is a shit show. And you know what, even though I hate on Wii U, I liked it when it first came out. I just it, I just hated what Nintendo did with it. I really did. They just kind of, they abandoned it. They did. And that's why I got rid of my Pro, pro Controller, because there was just nothing coming out for it. So if I had to play something on it, I had to use the gamepad. And I didn't like the gamepad. I don't know. Anyway, Party Arcade. This is actually a brand new game. I j well, brand new, it's sealed, but also brand new. I just got it like a uh, couple days ago. It was 10 bucks on eBay. I heard it's not very good, but I figured, eh, 10 bucks, might as well. Take a chance on it. Party Arcade. Party Arcade, excuse me. Uh, next is Aqua Moto Racing Utopia, which was also a $10 game on eBay and on Amazon, I believe. Might still be 10 bucks. I've heard this one's actually not too bad. If you like a, like a Wave Race style game, then you know what? They ain't making Wave Race anymore, so you might as well. Uh, I heard that one's actually pretty good. I, I don't know about Party Arcade. I don't think I even looked up reviews. It looks like a mini-game collection, so I can only assume it's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's shovelware. Of course, my boy, Zelda. My boy, my boy Zelda. Look, there he is. <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> my boy, Link. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Do I need to say anything about this game? It's amazing. Phenomenal. My, my computer just went to sleep. Now my glasses are glare. There you go. Now it's good. So Zelda, of course, Breath of the Wind. Love it. Bre Breathe of the Wind, as I call it. Uh, great game. <laughs> and it's uh, easily, easily top five of 2017. <sighs> I have to think if it is my number one. I can't think of anything else I would say is number one. So I guess it is. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, there you go, look at that, beautiful cover, love that cover, Rainbow Road, hate that map, but love that cover, uh, I will say this though, I'm not a big fan of this game, it sucks, no I'm just kidding, no I, I, I just, I don't know, for some reason I just don't really care for the Mario Kart games anymore, it's just preference, uh, and I'm, I'm a little worried that I might not like Crash Team Racing when it comes out, because I, I used to play that all the time, I used to play that and Double Dash, those were my only two kart games, uh, and I mean, don't get me wrong, Crash Team Racing, it, it, it could suck. It could suck bad. 
however it could. I mean, I don't know how it could. It was great back then. If it's the same game except revamped, then I don't see how it could be bad. But it could suck, and I I wouldn't care that much because I don't know. When I when I say I played it, I played it, but I don't have like a huge like. I don't have sentimental value towards that game. I do with Double Dash, though. I love Double Dash. The switching between characters and stuff and having two items. I'm glad they brought two items back in this, but I wish they brought the two characters back. I, I really enjoyed that. I don't know why I just did. That's just me. I love Double Dash. My favorite Mario Kart, and I could play that any day. Um, am I good at it? Not really. I mean, we used to just play Battle Mode, so if it comes to the racing, probably not. But uh, Battle Mode was fun, and I know they brought it back in this, but... I don't know. By the time this came out, I bought it. I was like, all right, I'm going to get into it. And I just went back to Zelda. <laughs> so it came out like a month after the, the Switch came out. So I was still playing Zelda. So I was like, eh, I don't know. And I was playing our games, like Overwatch. Uh, Splatoon 2, fun game. Uh, I do need to get back into this because I actually do really want to play this. But uh, I'm too busy playing... Uh, <laughs> I'm too busy playing Overwatch, so. Uh, Splatoon 2, this is one thing I will say about Nintendo, man. They got some good-ass cover arts. Like, look at this. Great great fantastic look at that vibrant and my next game of course super mario odyssey great game easily number two or three of 2017 i have to look through 2017 again to see if i'm not missing something but uh, i'm sure i am <laughs> i'm sure i'm missing like one game that i was like oh this game's amazing i love it i wish it could have my children but uh mario odyssey is not a it's not my favorite game of 2017 but it's it's up there great game um, and uh, another example of great cover art. Actually, this one might be my favorite. Just because of, of what it represents. And of course, you know what I'm talking about. It's an, another Nintendo game. Just came out recently. My boys. The brothers. My brothers. Smash Bros. Ultimate. And, uh, this game is, uh, great. It is. I mean, not gonna lie to you. I have a good time playing this game. But, uh, I'm not... Technically, I'm not really good at it. I mean, I could probably get good at it. I just don't really don't want to like i don't know i'm not terrible i wouldn't say the only thing i don't do is i don't do i don't block i use the dumbass shield because i'm not a bitch and i don't do the dodge roll because i'm not a pussy so those are only two things <laughs> i don't do i'm just here to piss off as many fanboys as possible if you use any of those two things all two of those things if you use any of them and it's not on accident you're a bitch. That's just that's just that's just how it is. Just come face to face with yourself. Uh, I'm just kidding. Kinda. So anyway, next is Valkyria Chronicles 4, another game I need to play. The reason why I got this one though is because it was really cheap on Best Buy. Best Buy screwed up and had the price for like 20 bucks. So uh, I think this is still like a 40 dollar game at this point. So uh, there we go. Am I gonna keep saying so? Uh, maybe. Maybe I will. Back here, Chronicles. Comes with a weapon skin. Or, no, controller skin, excuse me. Is that a, what is that? It's a wolf. Can you see that? Look at that, it's a wolf. Can you see? Probably can't see. <laughs> it's a weapon skin. It's a, not a weapon skin, a controller skin. And it's a wolf. Next is Dragon Ball Fighters, which of course is one of the best fighting games of last year. Uh, I will say this, I am not the biggest fan of the matchmaking in that game, because I played maybe a couple hours of it, and I every time I got matched up with somebody, it would be someone way higher ranked than me, and they would use the same combo, which I forgot what the combo was. I think it had, I think Kid Buu was a part of it or something like that. I don't remember. I'm not going to lie. I don't even remember if Kid Buu's in the fucking game. <laughs> Is it Kid Buu or just regular Buu? Um, I don't know. I don't care. But uh, I haven't played it in a long time, obviously. And uh, to be honest, I probably should have got it on Xbox, but I, I don't know. I kind of want it on Switch. I think... I think it's because I really wanted to play a story mode, and I feel like the story mode would, would be perfect as, like, a you put it in, play a couple of matches, you go do the thing, you know, it's like kind of like RPG-style thing, maybe watch a cutscene, and then you can turn it off. Uh, I feel like that story mode is perfect for the Switch. You know, it, it, you play a couple, get through it a little bit, because it, it gets a little repetitive. I played about, like, three hours of it on the Xbox, and I was already like, feeling, like, exhausted by it. I was like, eh, I don't know, the story mode's kind of bland when it comes to gameplay because it's you know i mean it, you're building yourself up but you're still fighting a lot of the same characters and it does it does ramp the difficulty up that's for sure but uh i don't know i don't know i i, I would have much rather uh, th them do a 
like a nether world uh, is it nether world no it's nether realm uh where they take their games uh like mortal Kombat and injustice and make it very narrative based where it's just like uh, cutscene happens cutscene happens cutscene happens you fight f uh, cutscene fight cutscene fight uh where this is just like cutscene then you grind for a little while just grind keep grinding grind 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 oh you leveled up all right fight fight evil krillin that's a very similar plot to smash brothers actually thinking about it i'm pretty sure right because they aren't they evil you have to like fight like evil krillin and once you do that he's on your side or something pretty sure that's true right whatever anyway next is a, a game i actually really wanted oh uh, and this is awesome cover art. i don't know what, what it is with switch games but a lot of switch games have freaking awesome cover art this one is namco museum arcade pack get it because pac-man uh by the way pac-man best character in smash N hands down don't at me don't even put a comment saying it's not that's not correct because you will be banned so, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. People will fucking tell me I'm wrong anyway. But anyway, you got Dig Dug. You got freaking uh, um, Pac-Man and the Ghost. The Crocodile. Who's the Crocodile from again? Well, you got Dig Dug and Pac-Man. So, anyway, it, it just comes with a bunch of games. comes with Pac-Man uh, Championship Edition 2, Pac-Man Versus, which is awesome. That, that game was awesome in the arcade, by the way. I had, actually had the GameCube version of that, and that was pretty fun, too. Uh, Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Splatterhouse. Oh, I didn't even realize. Uh, something I can't read that one. Tank Force, whatever. Anyway, if you want to look, there you go. Comes with all those. There you go. Can you see it? Might be blurry. If so, look it up yourself. Next, Super Fighting Robot, Mega Man. I love it. So there you go. I got it. I played a little bit of it. It's it is fun. It's challenging for sure. I should go back to it. Um, will I ever? I don't know. <laughs> I just don't play that many games anymore. I collect them. I just don't play them enough. But anyway, fun game. Uh, Moonlighter. Now, this game's really, really fun. Now, I'm a big fan of Stardew Valley. Um, I have a Stardew Valley thing here. I'm not going to turn the camera so you can see it. But um, I'm a big fan of Stardew Valley. So when I heard this game was like, you have to like... It's not from farming, obviously, but you go into a dungeon and you kill creatures and you take the stuff and you could sell it, which is similar to Stardew Valley. Um, when I heard that, I was like, okay, so it's mo more action-based. Definitely way more action-based. And uh, yeah, it, it definitely is, but you run your own shop, which uh, there's a game called Res Resitier. Re I can't remember how you pronounce it, but it's on. It's like a very anime-looking um, game. It has like the anime sprites and stuff like that on Steam. And I bought that and I played it for like a couple hours. I, I enjoyed it. I just never went back to it. So uh, this game's fun. I played this for about four or five hours and uh, I should go back to it. It is in my carrying case, so I will. Uh, this is a huge disappointment. The World Ends With You Final Remix. I just do not like the controls. Like so far, I'm actually kind of liking the story and the music's excellent and stuff. I'm only about two hours in, but I just do not like the controls. I cannot get past how bad awkward they are and i've heard on the ds they're great so maybe i should just go back to the ds one but i heard this one like it looks better obviously but it also adds new stuff so i want to play that new stuff i just have to fight through the controls which sucks uh i'll keep it in my collection though diablo eternal collection hell yeah i mean diablo 3 is great so any diablo is great I can't think of one bad Diablo game. There's only three, but <laughs> I can't think of one. I, I guess you could say, like, like the PS1 version isn't as good as the PC version, but it's still great. Um, that's the one I played, by the way. I played P uh, Diablo 2 on my PC, but I played Diablo 1 on PS1. I remember that. Um, I don't think Diablo 2 ever came to the PS1, actually. I don't think. I think that was past that point. I think Diablo 2 came out in, like, 2000, and the PS1 was kind of dying at that point. Yeah. Anyway, Deathmark. Now, I heard this game is messed up, really creepy. Uh, it's like a visual novel-esque kind of anime-ish. I was getting Zero Escape vibes a little bit from the way this was being explained, and the reviews definitely made me feel that way. So I will be playing that game. I think I might just wait until October to play that, but who knows. I, don't know. I say, oh, I might wait and do that, and I just never play it. Uh, and the last game, Starlink Battle for Atlas. By the way, love Switch cover arts. This right here, this gotta go. I do, I hate this. <laughs> this sucks. That should be on the back. But look what's on the back of this. So th this cover sucks. <laughs> like, I'll just say this one. This one sucks. So uh, yeah, Dead Cells is in there for some reason. I should put that in my in my switch carrier in case. But anyway, there you go. That is my collection. Uh, oh, actually, I have the uh, box only games. I guess I could show you those real quick. Uh, Here's another great cover art, Mario Tennis Aces. Just got rid of that. 
The Binding of Isaac After Birth. Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers. Rayman Legends Definitive Edition. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, which might be the worst box art ever, but okay. <laughs> Doom, which might be one of the best box arts, because, yo, it's the original cover, baby, you kidding me? Well, kind of. It's a little different, but it's close enough. <laughs> Not exactly. It's like what happens after the original cover, which I like, too. Pokemon Tournament DX, which is a great cover art, by the way. This is also a pretty good cover art. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Eh. Cave Story Plus. Get off. The Lego Ninjago Movie. Video game, of course. Arms, which is, uh, that, that one's not a great cover art. No, I won't lie. That one's not great. Fun game, though. Uh, and Marvel Super Heroes 2. Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. So, there you go. Now, that is my Switch collection. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me how you did it. And I could tell you where to fuck off. So, there you go. I'm just kidding. Anyway, there you go. Tell me, uh, what your favorite, uh day of the week is so there you go that's my question what do you think i was gonna ask something about the switch no just tell me what your favorite day of the week is see you later bye